Every first Saturday of November and second Sunday in March, millions of brains quietly glitch. One lost or gained hour, and suddenly coffee stops working, mornings drag, and motivation flatlines. It's not you, it's your circadian system lagging behind the clock. The good news? You can reset it in three days. No therapy, no supplements, just physics. And who am I to mess with time itself, like Dr. Strange summoning the time stone by the I eye of Agamotto? My name is Dr. Salman Aziz Mirza, triple board certified in adult psychiatry, child and adolescent psychiatry, and addiction medicine. And every year around this time, my calendar fills with people who think they're burned out, but really, they're just off by an hour. Think of it like jet lag, without the plane ticket. When daylight savings time hits, your brain doesn't just move the clock forward or back, it keeps running on yesterday's schedule. That mismatch sounds harmless, but it quietly stacks up through every system that runs on timing, sleep, hormones, and focus, and your brain pays the tax first. Here's the weird part. Your master clock sits deep in the brain, in a cluster called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, or SCN. It takes its orders from light, not alarms, not calendars, not your phone. When daylight suddenly shifts, your SCN doesn't instantly update. It's still waiting for the sunrise that used to come earlier. So for a few days, your biology and your schedule are in different time zones. You wake up groggy even after enough sleep. You chase energy with caffeine, and motivation suddenly feels expensive. It's not laziness, it's mistimed biology. Like the rock, light is the final boss. Morning light pulls your clock earlier, what scientists call a phase advance. Evening light pushes it later, a phase delay. Daylight saving time messes with both. In the fall, you gain an hour on the clock, but often lose morning light exposure. In the spring, you lose an hour and lose sleep, Either way, the wrong light hits at the wrong time and your internal clock drifts. Here's the part most people miss. There are actually two kinds of time, social time and biological time. Your calendar obeys the clock on the wall. Your body obeys the sun. When sunrise moves by an hour, your brain still thinks it's 6 a.m. when your phone says seven. That's why you feel off even if the numbers add up. And the drift doesn't just touch sleep. It touches everything that runs on sleep. Melatonin shuts off later, so you're groggy longer. Cortisol's morning rise happens offbeat, so you don't get that clean go signal. Adenosine builds up unevenly, making focus feel like a fight. Add screens and the delay doubles. Late night scrolling floods your eyes with blue light that tricks your SDN into thinking it's still daytime. So you fall asleep later, wake up earlier by the clock, and start your day already in deficit. The cycle feeds itself. Tired brain, more caffeine, later bedtime, rinse and repeat. Here's where it gets even more interesting. You don't have just one clock. You have hundreds. Your brain, gut, liver, and even your immune system all keep their own time. The SCN is the conductor, but each organ section needs to hear the beat to stay in sync. If light says morning, but breakfast or medication says night, those smaller clocks lag. That's when you get the fog, the nausea, the random irritability, the feeling that your brain is half a step behind your day. So here's your 24-hour experiment. Tomorrow morning, step outside within 30 minutes of waking. Don't stare at the sun, just get daylight on your eyes for 10 minutes. You'll feel the difference faster than you expect. The takeaway is simple. Your clock isn't fixed, it's programmable. It responds to four levers. In order of strength, light, meals, movement, and social cues. If you move a meeting one hour earlier in July, you barely feel it. Your brain's already advanced from extra daylight. Do the same in November when light shrinks and it hits like jet lag. The lesson, stop trying to motivate your way out of a physics problem. You can't outthink a clock that isn't getting the right signals, but give your brain the right cues, bright light early, dim light late, and your energy, mood, and focus will follow. So now that we know what's actually going on under the hood, let's talk about who this hits the hardest and how to spot it 
before it spirals. Here's what most people miss. Daylight saving time doesn't hit everyone equally. That one hour shift can feel like nothing or it can knock the legs out from under you depending on how your brain's wired. If your natural rhythm already runs late or you're sensitive to light, the change doesn't move your clock, it collides with it. ADHD brains feel this first. Most people with ADHD already skew towards a delayed sleep phase, meaning their internal clock naturally runs past midnight. Add in stimulant timing, dopamine sensitivity, and lost morning light, and it's the perfect storm. You stay wired late, crash late, and wake up into fog. The signs show up fast. Longer time to bed, sticky mornings, the I'll start after one more scroll loop, and the sense that every task takes twice the effort. Here's the reframe. It's not a motivation issue, it's a clock issue. You're trying to run focus and executive function on a biology that's still in yesterday. For ADHD, awareness is half the fix. Move the stimulant dose with your wake time, anchor breakfast to morning light, and keep caffeine cut off earlier for one week. Then there's depression and seasonal affective disorder. Those depend heavily on morning light, the signal that wakes up mood circuits. When that light shrinks, anhedonia swells. It's not winter blues, it's your brain missing on its daily on switch. Patients tell me, mornings feel pointless. That's the pattern to watch. Heaviness that lifts slightly in the evening, more sugar cravings, and fatigue that sleep doesn't fix. If you noticed that this week, it's not personal weakness. It's physiology asking for light. Here's your 24 hour action plan. Get outside within an hour of waking. Yes, even if it's cloudy. You're not chasing brightness, you're chasing contrast, the signal difference between indoor dimness and outdoor light that resets your clock. And then there's the bipolar spectrum. For some, one disrupted night of sleep is enough to flip the switch. A single hour can trigger racing thoughts, mixed moods, or irritability that feels energized but thin. It sounds dramatic, but the data is real. Irregular sleep patterns increase the risk of relapse and mood disorders. The key isn't perfection, it's guardrails. Consistent wake time, light at the same hour, caffeine cut off early. If energy spikes while patience thins, that's your warning light. Break early sleep first. Finally, the people no one talks about. Night shift workers, students, and parents with early schedules. They get hit twice by biology and by society. When the clocks move, so does every demand around them. School drop-offs, shift rotations, morning meetings. For them, preparation isn't optional, it's survival. Keep wake time as stable as possible, front load the bright light, and sync meals to your planned wake window not the wall clock. Here's the truth. When time changes, it exposes weak links in your rhythm. But once you spot them, you can strengthen them. Here's some quick red flags to watch out for this week. Mood dips that deepen in the morning, surprise irritability, late night scrolling that eats into sleep, and the thought, I just don't have the gears today. If you see two or more, treat it like a weather alert. The system's out of tune. Don't push harder. Adjust the light, the time, that caffeine, and give your brain room to resync. One of my patients used to say every fall felt like losing a gear. We tightened her wake time to the minute, put a light box at the breakfast table, and shifted bedtime five days ahead by 15 minutes each. Two weeks later, she said, mornings finally feel neutral, not hostile. That's the win. Not perfect, not euphoric, just neutral and predictable. Because once your mornings stop feeling like quicksand, your brain can actually start the day instead of surviving it. And if you're wondering how to make that happen, that's where we go next. The three-step plan that actually works. So now that you know why your brain feels off, let's fix it. You don't need supplements, hacks, or heroic discipline. Just light, timing, and repetition. Here's your three-step plan to beat the time change. Step one, morning light. Think of light as medicine for your time system. Your brain listens to sunlight before it listens to motivation. Within 30 minutes of waking, get bright light. Outside is best. If not, use a 10,000 lux light box about two feet away. 
You don't have to stare at it. In fact, please do not stare at it. Just let it hit your eyes while you eat breakfast. Check your email or scroll. Do it for about 20 minutes. And at night, protect the other end of your day. Dim the lights about an hour and a half before bed. Turn screens to warm mode. Keep your brightness low. Try this three mornings in a row. You'll notice your energy shifting earlier. That's your clock catching up. Step two, preview the shift. Don't wait for that first Sunday to wreck you. Start five to seven days before the time change. Move bedtime and wake time earlier by 10 to 15 minutes a day. It sounds small, but it adds up. By the time that Sunday arrives, your body is already adjusted almost an hour. Maybe even more important than that, keep your wake time steady, even on weekends. If you can only anchor one thing, anchor that. In the evening, keep lights dim for at least 90 minutes before bed. Stop caffeine eight hours before you plan to sleep. You're not just avoiding a crash, you're teaching your clock the new rhythm before the world demands it. And step three, align your medication and the momentum. The right timing keeps your biology in sync. Move your morning medication with your wake time. Don't take it on the old schedule. For this first week, avoid late day stimulants. After the clock change, your system is more sensitive than usual. Some people benefit from a small amount of melatonin. One to three milligrams about an hour before bedtime, never right before sleep. But always clear that with your doctor first. Remember, melatonin isn't a sleeping pill. It's a timing signal. And for one week, track your changes in a notebook, an app, anything. You'll see the pattern stabilize faster than you expect. Let's also talk about slip ups. If you sleep in or forget a step, don't panic. Just hold your wake time steady the next day. Use morning light anyway. It resets faster than willpower. If you hit an afternoon crash, keep naps short, 20 to 30 minutes max. Or try a coffee nap. Sip coffee, lie down for 15 to 20 minutes, then step into sunlight. It <laughs> sounds silly, but it works because caffeine kicks in as you wake up. Small actions, repeated daily, always beat one heroic effort. Most people try to fix daylight savings time with a single Sunday night push. But biology doesn't move in leaps. It moves in nudges. Light, timing, repetition. Give it seven days and your brain will catch up faster than you think. Remember how we started with that one hour that melts motivation and makes mornings feel heavy? Now you know why. It's not laziness, it's biology. Your brain trying to find its rhythm again. Every spring and fall, we move the clock. But the real adjustment isn't on the wall, it's in your neurons. Daylight saving time reminds us that time isn't just something we measure, it's something that we feel. And the signal that keeps it all in sync is light, the most powerful language your brain still understands. So guide your clock with light. Protect your timing. Let the rhythm do its work. Because once your system sinks, focus, mood, and motivation follow. And here's where it connects to something bigger. The same rhythm that struggles during the time change is the one that shapes your energy all winter long. That's why seasonal depression hits when it does. Your light cues vanish and your biology loses its compass. So before you blame motivation, give your body the message it's been waiting for. Watch my next video on seasonal depression linked down below and I'll show you how to translate light into mood and take back the season before it takes you. Your brain can handle the hour and it can handle the winter too. Lead it well and I'll see you in the next one. Be safe and be well.